Welcome to this lecture about the standard error of the mean. Note that we are here focused on the standard error of the mean, however standard errors can be used for other statistics as well. We will look at those in later videos. The standard error of the mean can be calculated by the following formula, where we take the square root of the variance denoted by sigma square, divided by n, which is the sample size. Remember that if you take the square root of the variance, we will get the standard deviation. The standard error of the mean can therefore also be expressed as the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. To understand the meaning of the standard error, let's consider the following data of body heights in centimeters for a population of 10,000 individuals. The mean body height of this population is 170 centimeters and the standard deviation of the heights is 10 centimeters. Remember from the lecture about the standard deviation that the standard deviation tells us that we will find approximately 68% of the data points within one standard deviation away from the mean given that the data is normally distributed. 170 minus 10 results in 160 which gives us the lower bound of the interval and 170 plus 10 gives us the value 180 for the upper bound of the interval. Thus, 68% of the individuals in the population are expected to have a body height between 160 and 180 centimeters. Also, remember that if we move 1.96 standard deviations away from the mean, we will cover 95% of the body heights in the population. Let's take a sample of four individuals from the population. The mean height of these four individuals is 166 centimeters. Now, let's take a new sample of four individuals from the population. The mean height of these four individuals is 170 centimeters. Note that the sample mean will vary from sample to sample because we draw four new random individuals from the population each time. Let's repeat the sampling process 10,000 times so that we have in total 10,000 sample means. These two mean values are from our previous example, and the value 168 is our last mean after we repeated the process 10,000 times. If we now make a histogram of all these 10,000 mean values, we see that the distribution of the mean values has the shape of a normal distribution, just as we would expect according to the central limit theorem. Note that the mean values span in the range between 153 to 187, whereas the original body heights span from 130 to 210. Since there are fewer individuals that are very tall or short in the population, it is not very likely that we will randomly select four very tall or short individuals for our sample. This is why none of the mean values are very small or large. Let's calculate the standard error of the mean based on the fact that the standard deviation of the body heights in the population is 10, and that we use a sample size of 4. We see that the standard error is equal to 5. However, how do we interpret this value? The standard error of the mean is actually an estimate of the expected standard deviation of the sample means. Therefore, if we would calculate the standard deviation of the 10,000 sample means, we would expect to get the value of 5. The standard error of the mean therefore tells us the expected spread of the sample means. We therefore expect that about 68% of the sample means can be found in interval 165 to 175. This is because this interval represents one standard deviation of the sample means away from the population mean. Note that it can be seen from the formula for the standard error that the standard error decreases when n, the sample size, increases. Let's repeat the sampling again. However, this time we use a sample size of 25, which means that we randomly select 25 individuals from the population and calculate the mean body height of these 25 individuals. 
Note that the standard error of the mean has been reduced from 5 to 2 when we increase the sample size from 4 to 25. If you make a histogram of these 10,000 new sample means that were based on a sample size of 25, it would look something like this. Note that the spread of the sample means has now been reduced, because most sample means are now much closer to the true population mean. A sample size of 25 results in a standard error of 2, which means that the standard deviation of the sample means is about 2. If we subtract the standard error from the population mean, we get a value of 168. And if we add the standard error to the population mean, we get a value of 172. About 68% of the sample means are therefore expected to fall in the range from 168 to 172. To summarize, the standard error of the mean is a measure of the expected spread of the sample means around the population mean. In other words, the standard error of the mean is to estimate the standard deviation of the sample means. If you increase the sample size, the spread of the sample means will be reduced because the sample means will tend to be closer to the population mean. Thus, if you increase the sample size, the standard error will decrease. Finally, we will here discuss the difference between the standard error and the standard deviation. Remember from the lecture about the standard deviation that we can summarize this data set with a bar chart like this, where the height of the bar represents the mean of the data points, and the error bar represents plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. One standard deviation away from the mean results in an interval which is expected to include approximately 68% of the data points. The standard deviation therefore tells us about the spread of the data. If you see an interval like this, we can expect that about 68% of the data points lie within this interval if the data is normally distributed. Sometimes an error bar may represent plus or minus one standard error from the mean. We can calculate the standard error by the following equation. Note that since we do not know the true population standard deviation in this example, we need to estimate the standard deviation based on our sample data. Since the standard error is calculated by dividing the standard deviation by the square root of n, the error bars based on the standard error will always be shorter than the ones for the standard deviation. In comparison to the standard deviation, the standard error does not tell us anything about the spread of the data. Instead, it tells us how certain we are about our estimated mean. If the sample size is large, this interval tells us that we are about 68% certain that the true population mean lies somewhere in the range between 3.5 and 4.5. Another important difference between the standard deviation and the standard error is that the value of the standard error is reduced if the sample size is increased. For example, if you increase the sample size, the standard error will be reduced because we are then more certain that our estimated mean is very close to the true population mean. In contrast, the standard deviation is expected to have about the same value because the spread of the data will not be reduced since an increased sample size will not affect the spread. However, more data points will result in a more accurate estimate of the standard deviation because we are then more certain that the estimated standard deviation from our sample reflects the true population standard deviation. This was the end of this lecture about the standard error. In the next lecture, we'll see how the standard error is used to construct confidence intervals. We'll also see how we can interpret the standard error when the sample size is small.